Now, this evening, I want to take you to Second Timothy, second chapter, and the eleventh verse, eleven and twelve. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. So, you know, there are depths here which I cannot dwell upon or do any justice to them. The truth, the truths, that arise from the cross. If I am dead with him, then I shall live with his power, live his life. You know, folks, the next verse says, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Now, you know, I have never dwelt in the realm of fantasy or just vain conjecture. But if we suffer with him upon the cross, suffer, identify ourselves with Jesus, then we shall reign with him. Fancy, reigning with the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Something which should blow our minds and say, hey, does God offer to me as sinner this privilege of being with him as a joint heir. You know, friends, we run after the marbles of this world. Did anybody here play with marbles? Ah, oh, yes, I did. <laughs> you know? Oh, we thought it was a great skill, you know? Playing with marbles. Did anybody play with tops? Yes, I too did. I tried it out at least. Just basic little toys, baubles. And here, if we could just get a glimpse of what it means to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus, with the glory that surrounds his throne, with the angels and archangels. You know, unfortunately, our president and, his, and the first lady were not given enough schooling for their first visit abroad. They should have been taught a little more protocol uh, that you don't touch the queen, you know. Uh, like any ordinary person, put your hand round the queen and things like that. Well, that, that goes to show that some of our folks need a little bit of training before they're entrusted with places of such importance. Whatever it is, you know, there in the protocol of heaven, there is room for a sinner like you and me. Our brother, the teacher who just gave his testimony, told you that one of the sticking points in his life was, how shall I confess my cheating in the examination? My high school metric examination. How can I confess it? 
He just told you that. You know, there are some little sticking points in our lives which keep us from the great things which God has got for us. Now, when the Lord Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 9, 23 and 24, If any man will follow me, will come after me. You see, the, here is an open invitation. Now, you know, there are certain qualifications that you will need to fulfill before you can even apply for one of these big jobs. But the Lord Jesus, when he called his disciples or told us of the condition which you must fulfill to become a disciple, he prefaced it with these words. What are these words? In Luke chapter 9, 23 and 24, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, if any man, you can't throw open an offer like this. You're going to be my disciple. You're going to be so close to me. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Now, taking my own life, I always thought that Jesus Christ was a, some kind of killjoy. He would just take joy out of my life and excitement. And so I was very diffident. Or rather, I kept him, just to think of it, is something startling. Keeping God at bay. What? Is he some bulldog or bloodhound or what is he? Keeping God at bay. What a terrible thing that is. And after all, you and I will have to face him one day. But then you will face him as a judge. But today, we can go to him like the Savior. We can fall into his open arms. But here it was. Here it is. I used to think, oh, I would have to deny myself this, that, and the other. What did I actually deny myself? You know, I was involved in a lot of sport and had to play some important games representing my school and so on. What actually happened was, after my conversion, I played far better than I did formerly. Well, so what did I deny myself? I denied myself all the filth, all the rubbish, all the junk, all those things that would retard my progress. That's all I denied myself. Now, you know, I say, unfortunately, preachers need to be watched when it comes to speeding. <laughs> well, just as you are 
leaving the door, you get a telephone call saying somebody is critically ill or something long distant. And you say, oh my, I'm late, but I have to deal with this people, this person who is giving me this information. By the time you get into the car, you're 10 minutes behind. And you say, that's no problem, we can make it up on the road. <laughs> the policeman can be told, hey, I'm going on the king's business. But not all of them would agree that that is reason enough for you to break the law, or whatever. You know, what is the secret of speed? It is the overcoming of friction. That's all it is. And if you eliminate friction, then motion becomes so easy, speed is just a part of life. And you go where you want to go in a few moments. Now, God wants to take the negativity, the friction, the jammed brakes. You know, when your brakes jam and the car will not move. You can do nothing with it. However, that's exactly what God wants to do. Take away the filth. Take away the junk. Take away the rubbish. Make you a positive person. Make you an overcoming person. That is the cross. He took all that is negative, all that is dark, questionable, and dirty. He took it all upon the cross. And he said, I will give you beauty for ashes. Beauty for you've got ashes. Why do you hold on to ashes? I've got beauty for ashes. You have burnt your talents. You have destroyed your ears. But I am going to give you beauty in the place of ashes. My dear people. And so when Jesus says, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Take up his cross daily and follow me. You know, this crossless Christianity, one of the things which was uh, made a big matter before the elections, last election, was the fact that the present president was under the preaching of somebody who tended to be very anti-American or whatever. Now, in the midst of whatever that pastor preached, I wonder where the cross was. If he had preached the cross, then we would have had an incumbent in the White House who is a man full of God's 
revelation. Instead of somebody who is mouthing off this and mouthing off that. What a tragedy at such an hour as this. You know, a crossless preaching, a crossless Christianity. You know, if, what does the cross teach you? When you come to the cross, you see the love of Jesus Christ is so overwhelming. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress. Helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Saviour, or I die. My dear people, that's what the cross does. The cross says you're nothing. Nothing in my hands I bring. You don't strut into the Lord's presence. Hey, Lord, you know I'm, I'm better equipped than you think, and I can probably give you some good advice besides. You know that, that kind of human pride is it's native to all of us. Native. You may not be the most talented, you may not be the most brilliant, but yet you're too proud. That's the impediment. Just too proud. Proud of what? You can't answer. You hardly know what you're proud of. And if you're honest, you will say, I have nothing at all to be proud of. I'm filthy, dirty inside. I look like a wonderful person outside, but I'm simply not that inside. You see, I'm describing myself, really. That's exactly what I was when I came to the cross, but that enlightenment came to me at the cross. And that enlightenment has stayed with me as I carried the cross daily. If I had abandoned it as a one-time experience. Okay, I've been through it all. I know it all. I'm fine. Set it aside. I, my experience entitles me to pour out my foolishness upon the congregation. Well, if I am of that opinion, my dear friends, I would revert to my old pride. It won't take very long. It would be almost an immediate reversion. Back to that old gutter. Sewage. Carry my cross. Let him deny himself and carry the cross daily. He that would follow me. Let him deny himself all the junk and all the rubbish. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Let us pray. Let us tell God, Lord, let there be truth in my heart. Let my conscience be free. Forgive me. As this teacher told us, that he found it so hard to humble himself. Lord, let it not be so hard for me to humble myself. 
you, the sinless one, humbled yourself on the cross. Help me. Here I am. Take me. Let me become a servant of righteousness. O oh Lord our God, at such a time, I thank you that there is the cross. The cross to which we can come. The cross which is the panacea for all our ills. Oh, my Father, give us this humbleness of heart. Save us from our incorrigible pride. Give to us that childlike heart that says, Lord, to whom shall I go? Whom shall I follow? Whom can I truly trust? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's not this prophet or that prophet. Or this dogma or that. It's Jesus. Oh, fill my heart with truth. Let us tell God. True confession. True humbleness. Give me a new heart, O oh Lord, to be your disciple and a servant of righteousness. Gracious Father, hearken to our cry, and we beseech you and pray that each one of us may be servants of righteousness and have the courage to stand for the truth. Hear our humble prayer. In Jesus' holy name, amen.